channel. So today I'm going to be doing another Mommy Monday video and I haven't done a Mommy Monday video in quite a while so I really wanted to do one today and I thought it'd be really fun to do a Mommy Monday Q&A because I've done I think two of these videos and both times they were really successful. You guys really liked them and you guys said that they helped you out a little bit and so I thought I would do another one. I got a ton of questions and so I thought I'd answer just a few of them. I don't want to make this video too long so I'll try to save some of the questions for like future videos and things like that um, but I will get to a few of them in this video. I'm not saying that I'm like this parenting guru by any stretch of the imagination. Um, these are just like my personal tips or maybe me giving you guys some advice or ideas on things that you could try based on my own experience as a mom. So I hope you guys like this video and let's go ahead and jump into the questions. Okay, so the first question is, my kids are obsessed with sugar and dessert. How do you deal with this? Are you talking about my kids? Because that is literally the definition of my children. My kids are so obsessed with like dessert, they're obsessed with, you know, sweets and sugar and all of that kind of stuff. My kids love sugar and sweets. And after every single meal, they ask me for dessert. Literally even after breakfast, they ask me for dessert. So I don't really have anything to like help you with this because honestly, it's a struggle I think for me and a lot of moms out there. But if I could give you one advice or one piece of advice, it would be to purchase like a bag of candy that has like small pieces of candy. We get these things called high chews at Costco and they're like these little candies and they're like these chewy candies. And we just give them one of those after breakfast, lunch and dinner because they always beg us for dessert. And so it's like, well, I guess one piece of candy isn't gonna hurt. So if you guys have like a giant bag of candy on hand and you can give them like one small piece of candy after dinner, you'd be surprised at how like, like happy they feel over one piece of candy. And a lot of times it'll make them happy enough to where they're like, okay, and then they'll run upstairs and play. So that's kind of been our thing is just getting a tiny bag of candy and using that. I feel like my hair's a little large and in charge today. <laughs> My kids never want to clean up their toys. How do you get your kids to help and not whine so much? Okay, good question, but I think that we all struggle with this a little bit. Like, I don't think any kid wants to pick up their toys. My kids complain about it, um, and it sucks because it's so hard, like, at the end of the night to want to have to deal with, like, a fit or whining or anything like that. I totally understand, but um, actually, I have a really interesting tip for you that actually we just started doing, and I got this idea from Elena's teacher. And she does this in her class every single day and it's such a good idea. So basically what you do is you pick like two toys off of the floor and mentally like those are the prize toys. So like if they pick up that toy, then they get like a little prize out of like the prize bin or something like that. And you could do like an M&M or a Skittle or something like that or you could do like a sticker, I don't know. But if they pick the toy off the floor that's the prize toy, then they get the little prize that goes along with the prize toy. And so what I found when doing this is like the girls get so excited to try to pick up as many toys as they can because they know like the more toys they pick up, the better chance they have of getting the prize toy. And so they're a little bit more motivated to like try to pick up the toys. The only downside to this is you really have to like focus on like who's picking up what and stuff like that, but it does help and I feel like it gives them some sort of like motivation and I think it's a really good idea. And Elena loves this at school. She always gets in my car and she has like a little piece of candy and she goes, I won the prize for picking up the right piece of trash or whatever. So that actually been working for us pretty well. Another thing I recommend is putting on a song and usually what I'll do is I'll let um, the girls pick out the song. So one day it'll be Emery that gets to pick the song and then Elena will get to pick the song and then our goal is to pick up all the toys before the song is over and it's kind of like a game that we have and that works sometimes. And then I think one of the biggest things, and this is something that we've really had to incorporate since we got a Nintendo Switch for Christmas, and they always wanna play a little bit of Mario Kart like before bed or like after dinner. And so when they ask and they say, can we play Mario Kart? I usually just say, you can play Mario Kart tonight for you know a half an hour or whatever, but you have to clean up your toys first. So no Mario Kart until you pick up your toys. And a lot of times they're like, but mom, we wanna play, and it's like, well, if you want to play, then pick up your toys. And the faster you, you know, pick up your toys, the sooner you get to play Mario Kart. And so I feel like having like that thing that they're looking forward to or some kind of like prize that they're working towards afterwards kind of like motivates them a little bit. And I find that like positive reinforcement is such a like better way of dealing with 
this kind of thing than like getting mad or getting frustrated. That's kind of my tips and those are like three ideas that have worked for us. You seem to be raising such good, kind-hearted girls. Do you have any tips for this? Sometimes I feel like when my son does bad things or makes poor choices, it reflects my parenting and makes me feel like a horrible mom. Okay, this is such a relatable question. I think every single person that's watching this video, every single mom can relate to that in some way. Like it's so easy to feel like, you know, the things that your kids do reflects on your parenting or you're not teaching them well enough or something like that. But I just want you to know like that is not the case whatsoever. And one thing that you have to remember is like your kids are learning about the world every single day. Like your kids weren't born knowing how to handle situations and you know, they're gonna make mistakes. And I was actually talking to my cousin the other day and we were having a really interesting conversation. I had a really interesting experience with Elena the other day and she went to school and you know, I've always felt like I've been able to kind of like talk to her about things and kind of teach her right and wrong and stuff like that. But I sometimes feel like, you know, when you're just bringing something up randomly, like don't steal, it doesn't really like, you know, sink in to them because they're not in like a mindset to really soak in that advice. Like they are not really hearing you the way that they should. And just the other day, um, Elena went to school and she didn't have a snack that day. And she told one of her little gut like boyfriends and he's like, oh, well, why don't we go into the teacher's office and I'll get you a snack. And she's like, uh, what? And he took her into the teacher's office and he grabbed like a little sucker out of the teacher's office and handed it to Elena. And Elena's like, I don't want that, I don't want that. And he's like, no, just take it, it's fine. Like, it's not a big deal, just take it. You don't have a snack, it's not a big deal, just take the sucker. And so Elena took the sucker and of course she got caught and she of course got in trouble, felt super, super bad. And your first like gut instinct is to be like, oh my gosh, like what did I do? Like you almost feel like you're not being a good enough parent or you're not teaching things the right way or whatever. But one thing that I learned in this situation, and this is so important because it was such a big learning experience for me, is I'm actually really thankful that Elena makes these mistakes sometimes because boy oh boy do they make for good learning experiences. And so what was really awesome about this was I was able to sit her down and have like a really in-depth conversation and she was already feeling very vulnerable. She felt like she got in trouble. She felt bad. She felt embarrassed. She felt guilty. So she was very much more willing to take in the words that I was saying to her and she really took them to heart. And so I sat her down and I was like, you know, did you feel like this was bad? You know, did you feel like, you, you know, maybe you shouldn't take the sucker, but you did it anyways. And I was like, that's called intuition. You know, you should always follow, you know, your gut instincts. If you feel like something is wrong, then you should always follow that instinct, you know? And I was also able to talk to her about peer pressure and like what that little boy did, he kind of peer pressured you, you know, you felt like it was wrong, but he kept saying, you know, oh, it's fine, it's fine, just do it anyways. And I was like, that's called peer pressure. And I kind of got to talk to her a little bit about peer pressure and what peer pressure is gonna look like as she gets older, you know? Like, if somebody wants you to smoke cigarettes, is that something that you would wanna do? And she's like, no, I never wanna do that. And I was like, well, what if somebody says, like, it's fine, like, oh, just do it anyways, nobody cares, like, it's the cool thing to do. You know, will you still do it? Will you give into that peer pressure or will you stand your ground? Will you say, no, I don't wanna do that? So it was a really good experience for me to really, really, like, push these things into her and like really help her understand. It made me realize in that moment, this is like a really long story, so I apologize, but it made me realize in that moment, like you kind of want your kids to make mistakes in their life, especially when they're young and they're naive and they just kind of do things by mistake sometimes on accident because they don't understand the world. It's such a good time to be able to explain the stuff and not only explain exactly what they dealt with, but also kind of, you know, go out and explain other things like peer pressure or you know what they think is right and wrong and their intuition and bullying and how to treat people like you can kind of touch on a lot of different subjects so with this story the point of this story is do not feel like a horrible mother if your kid does something wrong or if they make a mistake at school or they steal you know when you're able to do that, they're far less likely to do it again in the future. And so I feel like those moments where they do feel more vulnerable because they did get in trouble and they do feel guilty, they're far more likely to like, 
listen and never do it again. You know what I mean? So with that said, do not give yourself a hard time and don't give your child a hard time when they do make mistakes. Like, just be grateful that they can make them and that you can teach them the lessons in those moments. Because I feel like that's when the really, really good parenting moments come out and take advantage of those moments because I've learned that they're the best time to kind of teach your kids really big lessons. So that was a really, really long story. I'm really sorry, but yeah. Just know that you're a great mom and the fact that you're even asking me this question just proves that you're a good mom. You know what I mean? Do you have any good book recommendations for moms or any parenting books that you like? Okay, so I'm not a huge like parenting book person or like a non-fiction like I don't like non-fiction parenting books. I don't know why like they rub me the wrong way a little bit in a way sometimes. Um, so I haven't read any like parenting non-fiction books. Um, so I can't really recommend anything like that but actually not too long ago, I think it was last year, I think in maybe like March or May or April or something like that, I read a book called Fierce Kingdom and it was a fiction thriller. And this book really sticks out to me for like a mom specifically. And if you go on my Goodreads and you read my review on Fierce Kingdom, you can kind of see what I'm saying. But if you're a mom, especially of like a toddler or like a three-year-old, I highly recommend this book. So basically, like in short, it's about this mom who is a mom of like a three-year-old little boy, three or four-year-old little boy, and they go to the zoo. And she's hanging out with her kid at the zoo, and then all of a sudden she hears like these huge bangs, and she's like, what the heck is going on? And she's like, whatever, I'm just gonna stay here, play with my kid, and then we'll leave when the zoo closes. So when she goes to leave the zoo, she realizes there's nobody there, and she's locked in this zoo with these two um, like mass shooters. And I know this sounds like really scary and you wouldn't want to read this as a mom, but I have a reason why I like this book for moms. <laughs> sounds really weird now that I'm saying it out loud, but um, she's in the zoo with these two mass shooters and she's stuck in the zoo with her toddler. And the reason why I loved this book so much and I was so drawn to this book was because the author did such a good job at like explaining what a relationship between a mother and a toddler is like and the whole entire book, I was like, oh my God, I feel like I'm reading literally about myself and Emery, like what it would be like in a situation like this, if I was in a situation with Emery, like there's times where she's like hiding and her son is getting whiny, but she has to keep him quiet because you know, there's these like mass shooters around. Um, he starts to get hungry, so she has to find a way to get him a snack, otherwise he'll like have a meltdown. There's a part where she's like digging around in her purse to try to find like a toy or just something for him to play with. There's a part where he has to go potty, and so she has to find a way to get him to the bathroom. Like, there's all of this really, really interesting, intricate like mother-son or mother-toddler relationship, and the way she does it is just so good. You just see all the little tiny nuances of her writing where you can like see like how she relates the mom and son relationship throughout the entire story and it's so interesting to read because you're like oh my god I can relate oh my god I can relate oh my gosh like what would I do in that situation oh my god that reminds me of me and Emery or oh my gosh that reminds me of me and Elena like it's so interesting to read when you're a mom so that's one book I recommend but there is one that I do want to read though what is it called how to raise an adult is that what it is Let's see you have to scroll down okay it's called how to raise an adult Break free from the overparenting trap and prepare your kids for success. And so basically it's a book about overparenting and the problems with like helicopter parenting and overparenting and how to like raise your kids for adulthood. But it has a pretty high ratings, so I really want to read that one. So if you guys have read that, let me know if it's good. Somebody wants to see my mom, like a mommy Monday routine or like what my routine looks like as a mom. I've thought about doing that a lot, but seems like a lot of work especially because like we're always really rushed in the morning so trying to imagine like trying to film a nice video while being super rushed in the morning gives me anxiety just thinking about it but maybe if like Travis has like a day off or something maybe he could help me with it so maybe I'll plan something like that what is one of your biggest challenges as a mom so I already have this question answered in a past mommy Monday q and I think I have two other q and so you can check those ones but I did answer that question in that video so I'll let you go look up that one I'll link them down below if I remember kids did you always want them I hesitate on having them because my husband works so much and I don't want to be the only one raising them I never grew up dreaming to be a mother until I got married 
I personally always wanted to have kids. Um, ever since I was little, I always like planned on having kids. Um, but when I got to an adult, like adulthood, I was very much somebody that didn't like change. I didn't like changing my routine. And I'm one of those people that could literally put off having kids like my entire adult life because I just don't like change. And so when I decided to have kids, I literally just made like a cognitive decision. Like it wasn't like this, oh, I wanna have kids right now. Like it was more like a thought process versus like an emotional drive, if that makes sense. But it worked for me. And I'm really glad that I did that because I think like I said, I could have put it off for a really long time. Um, the only thing that I recommend to you is when you said you don't want to raise them by yourself because your husband works a lot, I would definitely try to get in a good place with that mindset because if you don't, there might be some resentment that happens. Like let's say your husband is working a lot and you do feel like you're at home a lot with the kids and maybe it's not something that you dealt with before you had kids, it might cause just some damaging resentment in your you know, marriage. Just know that if you are a stay at home mom and your husband does work, you are going to take a brunt of the work. Um, so know that maybe going in and if it's not something that you're really into or if you're not really into that idea or you feel like you might be resentful or something like that um, just really really think that through but of course you can always get daycare you can always do there's always options like let's say you're a stay-at-home mom and then your husband works a lot you know you could get daycare two days a week or three days a week or maybe half days or something like that like if you really feel like you need breaks or you're somebody that needs a lot of me time like don't feel bad about getting daycare um, every once in a while or having some sort of routine where you do have that daycare on occasion there's definitely ways around it um, but I would definitely consider those things before you do but you know some of us have to make that cognitive decision to have kids versus making an emotional decision and I think that um, you know that's something to think about too like not everyone is gonna be like oh my gosh I'm so ready like I just need to have a baby right now like not everybody feels that way but do people still ask if you want to try for a boy how do you handle questions like that <laughs> to be honest Yes, I do get that question a lot. And that question always rubs me the wrong way for some reason. I just don't like that question. And I understand people's intent by the question. They're not meaning it in like a hurtful or harmful way. Um, it's just like a genuine like, well, I have two girls, so are you gonna try for a boy? But I just think that question is just kind of funny and odd because honestly, if I wanted a third kid, I would have a third kid because I want another kid, not another, or not a boy. You know what I mean? Because there's a 50-50 chance there whether you're gonna have a girl or a boy. So it's like, you don't just have another kid because you want to try for a boy. Like, it's just not my thought process behind it. So if I ever had a third, it would be because I wanted a third child. And to be honest, I don't really care what I have. Like, I would love having another girl because I'm used to having girls. I have all the stuff for girls. Like, having a third girl would be freaking amazing. I would love it. But then having a boy would be cool too. So when people ask me that question, I usually just say, well, if I have a third, it will be because I want a third child, not necessarily because I want a boy. And that usually just kind of makes them go, oh yeah, okay, I guess that kind of makes sense. <laughs> or I say, yeah, I don't know, we'll see. That's usually what I say. Anyways, guys, that is the answers to these Mommy Monday questions. I hope that I answered some that you guys felt like were interesting. Um, and maybe I can do more of these in the future. Let me know if you guys like these Q&A type of videos. Um, I didn't do like the makeup tutorial part of this as well because sometimes I feel like that can be a little bit difficult. But if you guys like kind of like Q&A style videos, please let me know down below. And um, if you do, then ask some questions down below. I know I say this in all my Q&As, but this is so important if you guys like Q&As. Ask lots of questions and make them like deep. Make them interesting. Like. Just make a list of questions that you just think would be a really interesting thing to know. Even if they're weird, even if they're random, like just ask them. And they don't have to be about kids. They could be about just life in general. Like just ask random freaking questions. Anyways, that is it guys. Sorry this video is really long. Um, yeah, so I'll talk to you guys in my next video. Bye.